Hey there, fellow learner. You know how we love digging into those mind-bending ideas that make you say, aha, now that makes sense. Today, we're diving into something pretty wild. The idea that Bitcoin, yes, Bitcoin, could actually act as a leading indicator for the U.S. stock market. Sounds crazy, right? It definitely sparks your curiosity, doesn't it? <laughs> There's always a thirst for an edge in the market. And using Bitcoin like this, well, it's not your typical Wall Street playbook. Exactly. We've got some fascinating research from Quant Connect to unpack, but first let's talk about leading indicators. You know, like when your dog senses a storm is brewing before you do, he's happily playing fetch in the backyard, then suddenly he's at the kitchen door whining to come inside. It's like he has an early warning system, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's what a leading indicator does for the market. It gives us a heads up about what might happen in the future. Remember that time in March 2020 when the pandemic first hit? Bitcoin plunged before the stock market fully grasped the severity. That's the kind of leading signal we're talking about. So in the financial world, we're looking for those clues, those patterns that might hint at what's coming next. It's called technical analysis. Traders use charts and data to predict future stock prices. It's kind of like looking for patterns in the stars or maybe like your dog sensing a storm. It's all about pattern recognition, but that doesn't mean it's always accurate. We're hardwired to see patterns, but that doesn't mean they're always there. Thank you for tuning in to Quantopian's Quant Radio, your AI-driven podcast exploring everything related to quantitative finance. If you enjoy this episode, don't forget to like and subscribe to stay updated on future releases. For more Quant-focused content, join us at community.quantopian.com. There you can explore a wealth of resources, connect with fellow quants, engage in insightful discussions, and enhance your skills through our extensive range of online courses. Quant Radio is intended to help people develop their knowledge and skills in quant finance. This podcast is not intended to provide investment advice. And now, back to the episode. So where does Bitcoin fit into all of this? It's often seen as a risk-on asset. Right. Think of it like this. When investors are feeling optimistic about the economy, they're more likely to invest in things that are considered risky, like Bitcoin. But when things start looking shaky, investors might dump their Bitcoin holdings to free up cash, even if the stock market hasn't reacted yet. This makes Bitcoin's price movements a potential leading indicator, like that early warning system from your dog. So you're saying, like, we could use Bitcoin to time the market. Yeah, exactly. Like, if Bitcoin starts to drop, that's our signal to maybe sell our stocks and wait a bit. Uh, that's the million-dollar question, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And that's exactly what this QuantConnect research explored. They designed a whole strategy around it. Okay, I'm listening. How's it work? So it's based on Bitcoin's price. Right. Compared to its two-year moving average. Two years? That's a long time. Yeah, so think of it like a, like a line on a chart. Okay. That shows the average price of Bitcoin over those past two years. Right, right. And when Bitcoin drops significantly below that average, that's when the strategy says, Get out of stocks. Two years? Why so long? Well, it helps smooth out all the crazy daily ups and downs Bitcoin's known for. Makes sense. Because remember, we're trying to find those big drops. Right. Not just like a random Tuesday dip. Exactly. The ones that might mean the whole market's about to shift. Okay, so big picture stuff. Exactly. So Bitcoin plunges below this moving average line thing. Yep. We sell our stocks and then... Hold cash instead. Just sit on the sidelines. For that period, yeah. And if Bitcoin's just doing its normal thing above the line... Then you stay fully invested in stocks. They weren't looking at just any stocks, were they? What was it, the S&P 500? Spot on. They use SPY, the S&P 500 ETF. Okay. All right. I'm on the edge of my seat here. Did it actually work, this whole Bitcoin strategy? This is where it gets interesting. So, at least for the time period they look at, this Bitcoin strategy actually did better than if you just held the S&P 500 the whole time. Get out! No way! That's wild! It is interesting, right? Yeah. And get this. It had a higher sharp ratio than just holding the S&P 500. Higher sharp ratio? Remind me what that is again. Sure, yeah. So the sharp ratio, it basically tells you how much return you're getting Uh huh. for the amount of risk you're taking with your investments. Okay. Higher sharp ratio generally means you're getting more bang for your buck, so to speak. So this Bitcoin strategy wasn't just like making more money. Right. It was doing it more efficiently, less risk involved. That's what the back test suggests. Yeah. Mm, but... There's always a but, right? Especially in the financial world. There is. It's important to remember this is just one back test. True, 
Term. Past performance. Never guarantees future results. Exactly. It's like they say, your mileage may vary. 100%. Financial markets are, well, they're complicated. Yeah. There's a lot going on. Always. And this strategy, it's based on some big assumptions, yeah, right? Yeah, right, right. We can't forget that. So no crystal ball just yet? Not quite. So not time to fire our financial advisors and just let Bitcoin make all the decisions. Not just yet. Okay, good to know. But this research, it does make you think. It really does. Like what else could be out there? Yeah, exactly. Give me another one of those aha moments. Well, the QuantConnect researchers... They didn't stop at Bitcoin. Oh. They actually tried the same strategy with other cryptocurrencies, too. Really? Like what? Like like Ethereum. Okay. XRP. Yeah. Even Dogecoin. They tested it all. Wow. Okay. So Bitcoin worked as this leading indicator, but other cryptos, not so much. That's what's so fascinating. What's going on there? Well, it points to something kind of unique about Bitcoin. Okay. At least for this strategy. Remember, we're talking about it as an indicator of, like... Market sentiment. Exactly. That overall feeling in the market, are people feeling greedy or fearful? So is it just because Bitcoin's the biggest, the most well-known cryptocurrency? Could be part of it, for sure. Yeah. It's like what the gold standard used to be, Yeah. but for crypto. Right. So when investors get nervous... Bitcoin's the first to go. Exactly. Even before they touch their stock portfolios. So it's not even really about, like... Bitcoin itself, right? Like whether it's a good investment or not. It's more about what its price tells us. About everyone else. Exactly. Like, about how they're feeling. Like think of Bitcoin as, I don't know. The canary in the coal mine. Exactly. Whoa, okay. It gives you a little warning. If everyone's jumping ship on Bitcoin. Right. It might be a sign. Trouble's coming. <laughs> exactly. This is kind of blowing my mind. It's wild, right? So just to be clear, we're not saying Bitcoin causes the stock market to crash. No, 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 no. It's not like that. Correlation doesn't equal causation, as they say. Right, right. But it could be a piece of the puzzle. Okay. When you're trying to figure out what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, like an extra clue. Exactly. This deep dive has really got me thinking. Yeah. You know, there's so much data out there. Everywhere you look, someone's saying they have the next big indicator. Oh, I know. It's overwhelming. It is. But it's about finding what actually gives you an edge. A hundred percent. Could Bitcoin be one of those things? It's a question worth asking. It really is. And, you know, beyond just Bitcoin. Yeah. It reminds us to stay curious, to keep looking for new ways to understand things. Because sometimes the answer is in the most unexpected place. Exactly. You never know where you'll find that aha moment. Love that. And on that note, that's all the time we have for today's deep dive. This was fun. It really was. Thanks for joining us, everyone. And we'll see you next time. 